my soul will be made stronger. My faith will be made stronger. You know, how is it, Aletheia, that I always end up having to speak after an incredible song? <laughs> I don't get it. But it's still amazing grace. You know, giving honor and glory to God and thanks to all of you for allowing me this time to share this message with you. You know, November is a month where there are so many awareness opportunities. It's a month for elimination, for letting go, letting go of those things that no longer serve us for our greater good. It's a month for honoring our veterans and honoring their families for their sacrifices that they make each and every day. I think I can safely speak for Reverend Johanna when I say that she and I are both veterans of our military service, and we are proud to have served our country, and we are proud to serve God. This is a year where celebrating Thanksgiving presents its own opportunities. And in business, we call it opportunity cost. So this year, we're being asked to dial it back a little and not have large gatherings and to respect each other's safety during this time. But we know also that there are people around the world, like our military folks, who don't get a chance throughout the year to spend time with their families and friends. And so, for us, take this year, be calm, be grateful, be safe, and be healthy. That's the message to you. If you will, if you will bow your heads and lower your gaze or close your eyes, whichever you see fit, and here's a little prayer that I'll offer you. Holy Spirit, you give us strength to press on. You give us courage to find our way through the dark. You bless us with power, with love, and with sound mind. You lift us up when we've been down, and you look beyond all our faults, and you see our needs. You break every chain, and you free us from the ties that bind us. And you walk beside us and guide us to the still waters. And as we continue in that spirit, we recite the poem in our hearts and the prayer in our hearts with Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me before the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will rest and dwell in the house of of the Lord forever. Thank you, Reverend Johanna. You know, like so many people, I thought that the song Amazing Grace was written by an enslaved person. You know, oftentimes, enslaved people would sing songs. They would sing songs of sorrow, songs of joy, and songs of faith. And oftentimes, those songs became Negro spirituals. But the history lesson here tells us that this song was not written by an enslaved person. 
This song was written in 1779 by John Newton. John Newton was a young boy whose father was a sea captain, and his mother taught him to read the Bible. So he was someone who was brought up in faith. Now, back in England during those days, young men would be walking the streets and there would be a gang that would scoop them up and force them to join the crew of a ship. So life was hard on these ships. Bad company, bad food, bad everything. John Newton had one thing in his mind, the love of a woman. Her name was Mary. John had to leave the ship. He had to break away to go visit his beloved Mary. That was a bad move. He was caught, and he was stripped, and he was flogged. They transferred John Newton to a ship whose activities were to enslave people, a slave trade ship. So John Newton, thinking back on the days when, his, when he was with his mom, he reached back into the recesses of his mind to think about what he was doing, being on a ship that was involved in trading slaves. So as John Newton went along, he began to start thinking about prayer. And he began to start thinking about how these particular things that happened in his life would shape his life. And so his transformation didn't happen right away. On the road to writing the song Amazing Grace, John ran into people who shared some of the faith that he had. And he continued on this journey with slave trading, for quite some time. Eventually, John Newton was able to divorce himself from the slave trade industry. He became a pastor of a small church in England. And as a writer, he imagined the words to amazing grace. And as the article describes it, his very personal journey out of the spiritual blindness into the light of God's grace. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. And we all go through challenging times in our lives, and not everyone, but most of us make some choices that are questionable. And we find ourselves stuck in a dark haze that blinds us. And it doesn't allow us to see the healthy choices that are right there in front of us. But when we open our eyes and we open our hearts and we receive the wonderful blessings that God bestows upon us, we begin to see and accept our good. And when we look at this biblically, through either the transfiguration of Jesus or through the scales falling off of at then Saul to become Paul's eyes, we know that God's grace is sufficient, that no matter what the difficult time is, that no matter what or how high that mountain looks, that with God all things are possible. And even though we may not have earned that grace, that God's love, which translates to grace, is sufficient, that it lifts us be, be, uh, above any difficulty, above anything that we can see to give us that supernatural vision to give us that supernatural strength, to give us that joy, that love, that peace that the world 
knows not of. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour that I first believed. Even in those dark hours, our faith has waned and fear starts to take hold. And we know in our hearts that grace is a great fear reliever. In that moment, I opened my eyes and I breathed in that healthy dose of grace. I realized that the very air I breathe is amazing grace. That smile that I greet is amazing grace. Every step that I take is amazing grace. And we know that grace shows up in many ways. It shows up in a baby's cry. It shows up at the sound of children laughing. And it shows up in the fulfillment, how it feels to help someone else in need, that you are that amazing grace. And with grace, every aspect of your life is changed and transformed from your finances to your health to your relationships When we call upon that which is given through the love of God, we know we can be certain, we can trust in and put our faith in that one true thing that will always stand out amongst the rest, and that is God's grace. With over 7,000 promises in the Bible, believe me, God's grace can lift you can transform that job, can transform this community, and can transform and lift this world. It doesn't matter what the condition is. God's grace, God's love is enough. Amen. On the screen in front of you, you might see a picture of what we call the purple team. The purple team is... Air Force, Army, Navy, and Marines all working together for a single purpose. Our military folks work through many dangers, toils, and snares. So that leads to another verse in the song Amazing Grace. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Twas grace hath brought us safe thus far, and grace will lead us home. As we honor our veterans this month, it's important to note that our brave men and women face dangers, toils, and snares on a daily basis. At any given moment, one might be called into action, whether it's planned or unplanned. And our life is there but for the safety and protection of this country. These brave souls stay the course and stick to the plan. They overcome those dangers, those toils and snares with amazing grace. Now, we do this in our daily lives. We face all sorts of things that test our resolve. But grace has a little something waiting for us. Grace gives us strength to push through those dangers, toils, and snares, and it gives us the power to put on that armor and forge ahead, and grace lets us stand tall. And in continuing to honor our veterans, many times our brave young men and women are called to deploy, and one prayer that goes before them that many recite during those deployments is Psalm 91. And I'll read from verse 9. If you make the most high your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command the angels concerning you to guard you in all of your ways. 
They will lift you in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra, and you will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. Amen. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. So in certain terms, the meaning of grace is undeserved kindness. Who are we to deserve that kindness? So a little true story. Back in high school, I um, auditioned for quite a few things, uh, theater-wise and choral-wise. So I was selected to go to Switzerland with a group of um, high schools, high schoolers. And that would have been like the greatest thing since sliced bread to be able to go to Europe. I had never been anywhere outside of the continental United States, from North Carolina to Hawaii <laughs> and back, and, and that was it. So it was something that just really spoke to me. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to go. But little did I know that God and God's amazing grace had something else planned for me. So probably about... Uh, five years, four years after that, I joined the military. And during this time in the military, certain things happened and someone said, well, you should audition for the United States Army Chorus in Europe. So I did. And wow, I got in. After two auditions, I was part of the United States Army Chorus in Europe which also included a full orchestrated band at times. So this was a win-win. This, this was amazing grace working itself in my life because I didn't get a chance to do it before, but now I'm doing it big. I mean, my first show was in Strasbourg, France. From there, Belgium, Czechoslovakia. I even got a chance to visit the other side of the wall, if you all know what I mean, the Berlin Wall, while it was still up. So the amazing grace in this story is that not only a few years later did that wall come down, but I got to realize the dream to go to Europe. And I lived in Europe for four years, so I had a wonderful dream come true through amazing grace. Now, in the international version of the Bible, in 1 Timothy, verse 13 through 14, Paul tells Timothy, even though I was a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord poured out on me abundantly, along with faith and love, that are in Christ Jesus. So as I begin to wind this down, I kind of want to rev you up a little bit. That's my job, right? To inspire you. God's amazing grace is a life changer. God's amazing grace fills up your plate. It's like biscuits and gravy. It's like collard greens and ham hocks. It's like cabbage and tofu, if you like that kind of thing. <laughs> Amazing grace is a wonderful gift from God. When your way is dark and you see the light at the end of the tunnel, that's amazing grace. When you can breathe and take in that breath of life, that's amazing grace. <laughs> when you are sinking and in despair, and God lift you up out of that miry clay. That's amazing grace. When the one you love says back to you, honey, I love you too. 
That's amazing grace. <laughs> when you can look at the difficulties in your life and say, my God is greater than any problem I could possibly have. That's amazing grace. When you can hold your head up high and know that God is always there. That's amazing grace. When you realize that those who don't accept you at your worst don't deserve you at your best. That's amazing grace. When you see the year 2021 on the horizon and you realize that you made it through 2020 hindsight, that's amazing grace. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days will follow us all the days of our lives. Having been blessed with knowing those who have fought the brave fight with coronavirus and those on the front lines fighting it as well, they too are our amazing grace. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. You once were lost, but now you're found. You were afraid, but grace relieved those fears. You made it through the dangers, toils, and snares, and you broke the chains, and now you're free. Now it's time to sing God's praise. It's time to shout out. What do you think about God's grace? Isn't it amazing? think of all my life and what it's come to I'm convinced that it's the greatest mystery just to think the love of God is everywhere and more inside of me If I started writing now and wrote forever I know that all my words could not convey The depth of love so great Enfolding everyone within this place forever for our broken lives he brings us perfect peace from the shackles and the chains the God of love has come to set us free That he came to where we are Isn't it amazing Isn't it amazing That a king would go so far Doesn't it amaze you Doesn't it amaze you That we feel him in this place Isn't it amazing That you're everywhere we are 
that you love to 